Hey there, fellow travelers. John here from the Tolkien Road. New Middle Earth films on the way. That's what we see here on this headline from uh, Deadline.com. More Lord of the Rings movies in works as Warner Brothers and New Line strike rights deal. What in the world is going on with this? This news was from yesterday as I record this, February 23rd, 2023. Less than 24 hours ago, it would appear, based on the timestamp and when I'm recording this. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to get on here and talk about this with you guys. Um, so let's do that. Like, subscribe, comment, please. Like, subscribe, comment. All right, well... This comes from a uh, Deadline article, and so there's some different quotes in here that we'll go through, and we'll talk about what this might all might mean. Um, first of all, the the first thing to talk about here is that this was mentioned by Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav during the news um, on yesterday, during the company's call to discuss its, its Q4 2022 earnings results. Um, so... It's a, uh, you know, this sounds like something that they've got a lot of intention. The, the big thing that makes, that jumps out to me here is like, so does this, what does this say about the, um, what does this say about War of the Rohirrim, right? The animated film that's going to be coming out in April of 2024. We'll get to that. Um, does this have anything to do with the Rings of Power TV show? Um, but let's jump down, let's jump down to some more substantive uh, comments here. One is from Lee Gwinchard. The CEO of Embracer Group's operative group, Free Mode. I will say it's not entirely clear how Embracer Group relates to all of this from the article, um, but I'm going to assume that this fellow Lee Gwinchar, because he is quoted here, has a lot, you know, has a big part to play in this. So Lee says, following our recent acquisition of Middle Earth Enterprises, we're thrilled to embark on this new collaborative journey with New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers Pictures bringing the incomparable world of J.R.R. Tolkien back to the big screen in new and exciting ways. We understand how cherished these works are, and working together with our partners at New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers Pictures, we plan to honor the past, look to the future, and adhere to the strongest level of quality and production values. Um, so Middle Earth Enterprises, now, you, you know, this is the company that owns the rights, um, various rights, so let me jump down here. This will explain it pretty well, but they basically... Um, own the exclusive worldwide motion picture games, merchandising stage, and other rights uh, to certain Tolkien literary works, including Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I'm not sure, because uh, I know everybody's mind's going to jump to the Silmarillion, I'm not sure how those uh, rights might play into all of this. Maybe somebody can help us out with the comments. But uh, uh, they do own a lot of, the, you know, the, the I guess the, the different names that you think of, like Middle Earth Enterprises seems to own the rights to all of those things. There's a long history of how they came to have them, uh, all those sorts of questions. Apparently, I, and I think that the exception to that would be they don't have the TV rights, obviously, because Amazon is doing a lot there, but it all gets a little complicated. Nevertheless, um, this is a big deal for these different groups to be joining forces here. Obviously, New Line, Warner Brothers uh, were the ones that made the uh, uh, Peter Jackson uh, Middle Earth films, all six of them. So uh, that's that's all in play here as well. And then another quote, this time from Warner Brothers Pictures Group co-chairs and CEOs, Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi. 20 years ago, New Line took, unprecedented leap, took an unprecedented leap of faith to realize the incredible stories, characters, and world of The Lord of the Rings on the big screen. The result was a landmark series of films that have been embraced by generations of fans. But for all the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by J.R.R. Tolkien remains largely unexplored on film. The opportunity to invite fans deeper into the cinematic world of Middle Earth is an honor, and we are excited to partner with Middle Earth Enterprises and Embracer on this adventure. So that tells me that, you know, that that quote right there tells me uh, that this is going to be really focused not so much on remaking what's already been done in terms of Lord of the Rings and uh, The Hobbit, but further expanding in the sense of what they're doing with Ro War of the Rohirrim uh, in April of 2024. So uh, that would seem to be where we're headed. That would seem to be where you're he we're headed. And, you know, at this point, uh, you, you would have asked me a couple of years ago, I would have been really excited about this. Uh, at this point, after seeing how the Rings of Power season one played out, I'm, a l I'm pretty skeptical, right, to see if uh, Hollywood can actually pull this off. Um, whether or not Peter Jackson may be involved in this, right? 
Um, you know, the reason I say that is not so much a diss of Peter Jackson. I, I truly think he was visionary in the way he made those, uh, the original Lord of the Rings films. The Hobbit films, in my mind, were not as successful because they were not the, uh, the pr- products of a starry-eyed genius at work, is like the Lord of the Rings films were, uh, but more of like, okay, let's make some more money, kind of corporate interest going at it, right? And I think when the corporate interests get involved, that's when things start going off the rails, right? Um, if you don't have somebody who can really you know, take the reins and be like, look, we're going to do this, and it's either going to happen my way or it's not going to happen at all, then you end up getting something that's just kind of mediocre. And uh, I think that's largely what we saw with the Rings of Power. Um, one other thing that's not clear from this is if whether the Tolkien estate will be involved. Um, I don't think... Th- I, they'd really need to be. Now, it would probably be something where they might want to go see if they can get the Tolkien estate involved. Of course, they'd probably have to pay them a lot of money. But I think they might even be freer than Amazon was, in this case, to uh, to move forward with just making movies um, as they see fit. Now, the big question, uh, a couple of big questions for me. Um, will these be animated, right? Because we know that War of the Rohirrim, which is coming out, will be animated uh, I assume that these are going to follow on from War of the Rohirrim. Like this this quote about um, the the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by J.R.R. Tolkien remain largely unexplored on film. That tells me that this is their interest here is going deeper into stories that were not completely told by Tolkien. So this tells me that the the, the big focus is probably going to be mining the appendices, right? Mining Appendix B, uh, maybe some of Appendix A as well, to flesh out some of these stories. There's lots of stories that could be told, they just weren't very well fleshed out by Tolkien. There, you know, there's some exceptions. There's some stuff about Aragorn and Appendix A that, uh, you know, that tells us a good bit more about dwarves, um, you know, different stories of that nature. Uh, Even so, they weren't like, you know, fully mapped out stories so much as just kind of like little snapshots of uh, different periods of time and particular characters. So I don't know that any of that is enough to uh, just turn it right into a script. So there's probably going to be a lot of story development that needs to happen. Um, But that would seem, you know, they would seem, so it would seem to be heading the direction they are with War of the Rohirrim where you've got like five or six uh, little notes uh, in the, in timeline, in the Appendix B in the timeline of the third age. Um, And then you've got you know, a couple of pages within Appendix A that tell more of the story of that particular period. And you're going to use those to create your story. So you don't have all the dialogue and everything figured out so much as you just have kind of the, the overarching, um, you know, the kind of, kind of the, the high level of what happens in the story, not the details of what happens. Now, there's a lot. I mean, there's still 3,000 years of history in the Third Age alone worth of stories to tell here. Um uh, you know, maybe they're going to shy away from the second age. I don't know. Um, there, there are some stories they could tell from the second age, but then they'd be competing, obviously, with what Amazon's trying to do with their TV show. And while it would seem they could do that, I'm not sure they'd want to do that when there's other things they could be going, uh, you know, going after. Uh, but you know, it is interesting to think about. Like, are they? What's the calculus here for them? Are they saying to themselves, like, "Gosh, look how much success Amazon had with the Rings of Power," or are they saying? Well, Amazon's not doing it as well, so maybe this is our opportunity to jump in and, and create something that fans are really going to be happy with. I mean, I'm still pretty happy, you know, excited. I, what can I be happy about? But I, I'm excited to learn more about War of the Rohirrim. I, I've i been advocating for a while that animation, you know, high-quality animation is the future of storytelling on the screen for Middle Earth. Um, I just think you can do so much more with it. Um and I think it's fitting for uh, for this world as well. I'm not talking about like you know Disneyfied cartoons. I'm talking about um, you know just some some of the more like uh, adult level animation that you see in in anime, right? So we'll see what all plays out with that. Um, what about the Silmarillion? What about uh, the rights to stories of the First Age? Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, nothing is mentioned about that here. I'm not sure whether Middle Earth had uh, Middle Earth Enterprises had the rights to any of that. I feel like they had they they owned naming rights to a lot of those things, um, but I'm not sure if they own the rights to actually to any of the stories there. But that's where maybe again they might be thinking to themselves like, okay, 
Amazon maybe not doing so well with their whole their whole plan here. So maybe we have a chance to get in here, start telling some stories, show how to do it right, and then we can go to the Tolkien estate and win the rights to tell you know the stories of the Silmarillion. Nevertheless, uh, it would appear Warner Brothers' new line are hoping to uh, create their own cinematic franchise, go back to the big successes they obviously had with Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and do a lot more down that front. So that's what I'm seeing right here. Obviously, this is very early news. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, again, you asked me five years ago, I would have been ecstatic about this, would have been really excited. At this point, I am much more measured and, uh, you know, tempered in my expectations about what to, uh, wh whether anything worthy of Tolkien's name can actually come out of Hollywood at this point. Um but, you know, we'll see. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how this all unfolds. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see whether War of the Rohirrim is actually good. If it is, then that, that will give me a lot of hope. Uh, if it's not, then it'll be kind of like, well, I guess we're just going to have to suffer through a lot more mediocre Middle Earth. Um, so, on the big screen. Uh, nevertheless, Tolkien remains. His stories are uh, the greatest stories there are. So, that's what we have. Um, so, anyway, what do you guys think of this news here. What are your, what's your initial hot, you know, hot take reaction to it? Um, you excited about it? Not excited about it? Uh, let's talk about it in the comments and I'll look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, once again, please, hey, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment. And uh, if you really like what I've got going on over here at the Tolkien Road, head on over to patreon.com slash Tolkien Road and uh, check out what I got going on over there. Thanks a lot, everybody. Talk at you next time. Bye-bye.